welcome to the God Project. Um, today's today's reading is where is Israel today uh, by William J. Eisenman DD uh, it must be remembered that the God Project is not about proselytizing converting or soul saving it's about what the Bible says it seems there is much confusion surrounding the 12 tribes of ancient Israel and where are their modern-day descendants today? The story begins with Abraham. For his obedience, God made some unconditional promises to Abraham. Genesis 22, verse 17. God would multiply Abraham's seed as the stars in heaven. They will possess the gates of their enemies, and in Abraham's seed the earth would be blessed. Abraham was to be the father of many nations, and God gave the land of Canaan to Abraham and his seed. Genesis 17, verses 1 through 8 and Genesis 13 verses 14 through 15. These promises were passed on to Abraham's son Isaac, Genesis 17 verses 18 through 19. Isaac passed these blessings on to his son Jacob, Genesis 27, 26 through 29. Jacob's first son was Reuben, by his first wife, Leah, Genesis 29, verse 32. Their second son was Simeon, Genesis 29, verse 33. And their third son was Levi, while their fourth son was Judah, Genesis 29, verses 34 through 35. Jacob also married Rachel, who had difficulty conceiving. So she convinced Jacob to have sex with her handmaid, Bilhah, who gave Jacob his fifth son, Dan, Genesis 30, verses 4 through 6. Bilhah also bore Jacob's sixth son, Naphtali, Genesis 30, verses 7 through 8. Leah's maid, Zilpah, then bore Jacob's seventh son, God, G-A-D, God. Genesis 30, verses 10 through 11. Zilpah also bore Jacob's eighth son, Asher. Genesis 30, 12 through 13. Leah bore Jacob's ninth and tenth sons, Issachar and Zebulun. Genesis 30, verses 17 through 20. Rachel finally had Jacob's 11th son, Joseph. Genesis 30, verses 22 through 24. Rachel then had Benjamin and died. Genesis 35, verses 17 through 19. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Genesis 32, verses 27 through 28, and Genesis 35, verse 10. God promised that a nation and a company of nations was to come out of Jacob. Genesis 35, verse 11. Jacob's 12 sons were now known as the twelve tribes of Israel. Genesis 35, verse 22, Genesis 49, verse 28. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh. Genesis 41, verses 51 through 52. And Jacob blessed these two 
and said, Let his name, that is the name Israel, be on them. Genesis 48, verse 16. Ephraim was to become a multitude of nations, and Manasseh a great nation. Genesis 48, verse 19. After the death of King Saul, David was anointed king at Hebron over Israel. 2 Samuel chapter 2 verse 4 and 2 Samuel chapter 5 verses 3 through 5. However, 10 tribes broke away and went with Jeroboam their king. 1 Kings 11 30 through 33. Israel was now two nations. 1 Kings chapter 11 verses 35 through 42. Solomon, the son of David, when he was king, was left with the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. 1 Kings, chapter 11, 35 through 36, and 1 Kings, chapter 14, 7 through 11. Solomon reigned in Jerusalem, while Jeroboam ruled in the north at Samaria. Jeroboam gave the people golden calves as gods so they wouldn't have to go to Jerusalem to worship. 1 Kings chapter 12 28 through 33. It must be understood now that Israel now consisted of two different nations. Two kings Judah was now ruled by a Solomon's son, Rehoboam. There was war between Jeroboam and Rehoboam all their days. Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, conquered Israel and took the people captive, captive to Assyria. 2 Kings chapter 15 verse 29. During the reign of King Ahaz of Judah, the people were called Jews. 2 Kings chapter 16, verse 5 through 6. King Hosea, Hosea was now ruling Israel when King Shalmaneser of Assyria besieged Samaria, captured it, and took away the people to Assyria. 2 Kings chapter 17 verses 5 through 6 and verse 23. Now only the tribe of Judah, the Jews, were left. 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 18. The birthright of Reuben, Jacob's first son, was given to the sons of Joseph, Ephraim and Manasseh. 2 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 1. God scattered Israel to the north and other countries. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 8. Even after mass extermination procedures against the Jews throughout history, even the Roman Catholic Church pitched in, there are Jews in the world today. But where are the lost ten tribes of Israel? Israel disappears from history after their last captivity by Assyria. Remember, that all Israelites are not Jews. Jeroboam set up Sunday worship, Baal, over Israel when he was king. 
Hosea chapter 2, verse 11. As a result of this, Israel lost sight of God's true Sabbath, the last day of the week. This would mean that the modern-day descendants of the ten tribes of Israel would not be Sabbath keepers. They would be idolaters, having the wrong God. The Assyrians migrated to northern Europe and settled in Germany, taking with them their Israelite slaves, which were eventually allowed to migrate northwest to northwestern Europe and the British Isles, as well as Scandinavia. These people had lost their national identity and Sabbath keeping that identified them as God's people and nation. These ten tribes became lost to history. They considered themselves to be Gentiles. And in time, the birthright nations, Ephraim and Manasseh, began to experience the held back promises of God. Genesis 48, verse 16. Since the early 1800s, Britain and America experienced growth like nothing before in history. The God of the Bible foretold this growth and wealth accumulation. These two nations were experiencing the promises God gave to Abraham. America is mentioned in the Bible. The descendants of Joseph's son Manasseh are those who settled America. To make it clear, Ephraim was to become a company of nations, Genesis 35, verse 11, while Manasseh was to become a great nation, Genesis 49, verse 22. Now, if there are Jews in the world today, Judah, then the lost ten tribes must also exist. The real Israel must exist. Modern day Israel in the Middle East are Jews. They are not the lost ten tribes called Israel. The Ten Tribes have lost their identity and their history. Along with Ephraim, Britain, they are now destined to experience God's curses for their idolatry and disobedience. The Bible says there are bad times ahead for all the modern-day descendants of the Twelve Tribes of Israel. God kept his unconditional promises to Abraham and now those promises are being withdrawn. The modern day descendants of ancient Israel are under the gun. The End <laughs>